Working with C++, C in and C out, can be a little fiddly, but I'm going to show you how to do some input, do some calculations, and then do some formatted output to get some nice looking output for a console C++ application. So let's take a look. So launching my project, if I go into the project folder for Visual Studio, you will see the Visual Studio solution file. And if I double click on that, that will launch my project in Visual Studio. Now I've also, this is C++ console. So I've also shown how to do this using the online GDB compiler. So you can do it either way, that's fine. This program is designed to let us work with C in and C out, do some inputs, do some calculations, and do some formatted output. So here in the United States, we use this measurement system, the English measurement system, which is miles, yards, feet, and inches. However, the rest of the world uses this thing called meters. So to give us something to work with in this program, I'm going to take these four inputs and convert them into meters. I'm going to convert each one individually into meters, and then I'm going to get the total meters. So at the top of a C++ program, you're usually going to have I.O. stream. Now I'm also going to be working with the uh, I.O. manipulator, so I've included I.O. manip. And to make things easier, so I don't have to prefix everything with S, with standard, colon, colon, all the time. I'm just saying use namespace, using namespace standard. So the first thing you see in this program is I've declared some constants of type double, and this is like a variable, except it's not allowed to be changed at runtime. So by tradition in the C++ language, in this family of languages, when you're creating a constant, you capitalize the name of the constant. So you can see there's 1609.344 meters in one mile. And there's 0.9144 meters in a yard. And so on and so on. So I've created these four conversions and I'm going to use them in my calculations down below. Constants are just for the convenience of not having to put what we call a magic number in the middle of your calculation. Just some weird number that shows up is not going to be the best programming habit because people don't know where you pulled that number. If you look right here, not only do I have an, a good name that makes it easy to understand, but I've also given an ex explanation off to the side, put a comment next to each variable. Now when we get into our main function, I've actually created four variables that's going to take my input from the users. These are doubles, so I like to name my variables dbl to tell myself it's a double and then it's called in miles because that's going to be my input miles and in yards, in feet, and in inches. So probably the best thing to do right now is just run the program and show you what's up. So I'm going to come up here to my run button, the triangle, the green triangle, run the program. And as you can see, the program is asking me to enter the miles. So I'm going to use this set of data, three miles, 105 yards, 235 feet, and 11 inches. So why am I using this data? I don't know, because the answer comes out to be 4,995.95 meters. So you can see when I'm outputting the data, I've lined everything up in columns, and I want to show you how to do that. There's a little bit of work involved when you're outputting your data to try to get everything to come out in fixed columns and fixed decimal points. 
So once I've run my program, I can just press any key to close the program. There we go. And then we're back in our code window. So once again, this is the four variables I'm going to be using to do my input. So just to make sure everybody knows what a variable is, a variable is I'm telling the compiler I need enough RAM to hold a double floating point variable. Here's the name of it, and that's how I'm going to reference it in my code by its name. Now, when you create a variable, it's uninitialized. It does not have a value in it. It's not going to be a problem for these four because I'm going to be inputting from the keyboard into these values, into these variables, replacing the value. Now, after I've inputted the miles, I'm going to convert the miles into meters and store the answer in this double variable. And then I'm going to output it using C out. And then the same thing for turning yards into meters, feet into meters, inches into meters, and then the grand total is going to be in double total meters. And I am going to start this one out at zero. I'm going to pre-initialize it to zero. So to do my inputs is pretty easy. We say C out and we use the insertion operator and you notice the double less than sign is pointing at C out. So it says send this string to C out and then I want to do two lines. I want to skip two lines. So I say insertion operator, end L, end L. Now you can also use the way we did a new line in in the C language, which is double quote, backslash in for new line, double quote. So you will see both of these depending on the circumstances, depending on uh, what code sample you're looking at, what book you're looking at. They both work the same. I'm going to use indel, but I'll leave that as backslash in. So then what? C out please enter the number of miles colon and you see I am also outputting a space so it looks nice and then I say CN character input and it's going to be from the keyboard into you see how the now it's a double greater than sign and it's pointing at double miles so this is going to input the miles this is going to input the yards this is going to input the feet this is going to input the inches now that I've done that, I've done my inputs. Now I'm going to do my processing. I'm going to do my math. So turning miles into meters is going to be my n miles times my constant. So for every mile, it's going to be 1609.344 meters. So this will convert my miles into meters. This line will convert my yards to meters, feet to meters, inches to meters. Now I have my individual values. Now I need to total them up, add all four of these up, and put them into total meters. Now to make everything look nice, I'm going to be using some formatting commands. So the first thing I did is I said C out, and by the way, I don't need standard right here because I said up here, I said using, oh, look at that, I left, I lost, there it is, using namespace standard. So since I'm using namespace standard, you don't have to prefix standard out or standard right here. I could have just done it like this. Same thing here. Okay. It's a little more understandable self-documenting if you say standard colon colon fixed because then they know that this fixed formatting is coming out of the standard library. Same thing here. So the first thing I'm doing right here is I'm setting my output to fixed as opposed to as opposed to scientific notation. So I'm saying a fixed number of decimal places. The next C out I'm saying I want two decimal places and I want everything to be right justified. So you can set these items once. These three items can be set once and they stay set until 
you set them differently. So I've done my input. I've set some flags so that I'm ready to do my output. I'm going to skip a line. I'm going to print my header line. And I'm doing some tabs. That's backslash T. So a tab moves your cursor to the next. Traditionally, it's an eight space tab stop. So if you're three spaces into the current tab stop and you do a backslash T, it's only going to go five characters. If you're, if you're four spaces into an eight space tab spot stop, it's going to jump four characters. So it's going to get you aligned on the tab stops. So this will get everything lined up real nice. And honestly, I did a little bit of experimentation to get these headers to line up over the top of the data by adding some extra spaces and then I skipped two lines. So now I need to output miles and I want to print out my miles but I'm saying set width. Okay, Set W sets the width of the following output. Only the next output. It's not sticky so you have to do it over and over and over again. So I'm saying when you output double miles, use 10 spaces, and it's going to be right justified, two decimal places fixed. So it's going to look nice. Then I did a tab. I had to do a set W again, and now I'm outputting the miles converted to meters. If I continue doing this, I'm doing the same thing for yards. I'm setting the W. Here's my input yards. I'm setting the width to 10. Here's my output. Got some tabs in there to get everything to line up. And then I do the same thing for feet, the same thing for inches. And then I do a bunch of tabs and a couple spaces to get these dashes to line up just right. And then I print out the total meters. So it's it's tedious having to do the set W over and over again, but you have to do it for every variable you're outputting if you want to assure that it's going to use 10 spaces. Because if I only use it for this one, this will be 10 spaces. And if I don't do it here, this will just be however many spaces it is. And it won't come out lined up. So once again, if I run it, if I come up here and run it, and I'll just pull this back onto my screen because it's putting the run window on the other screen and once again three miles 105 yards 235 feet and 11 inches now you can see the set W is making each of these numbers use 10 spaces they're right justified two decimal places so they all line up well I did backslash T, backslash T, backslash T. I got all these tabs to here and maybe a few spaces. And then I printed out these dashes to get it to line up well. You see, I did the same thing up here. I used a combination of backslash T and some spaces to get these to line up properly. So it was just a little fiddly getting everything to line up, but it looks nice now. Fiddly. So if you ever have an assignment or you're fiddly. ever trying to get some stuff to output in columns, it's not that hard. It's just a little fiddly. So I can press any key to close this window. And let's watch this running in the debugger. So C++ Visual Studio has a wonderful debugger. I'm going to come over here to line 42 and click in the gray margin. I get a, a red circle, which is going to pause my code when I hit this line of code. So now if I start running my program, it's going to pause at this line and I can tell it to continue running. It has not run this line of code yet. I can tell it to continue running by staying by saying step over and that will run one line of code. Now I'm going to run another line of code. Step over and now it's going to do my CN. So now it's waiting for me to type in my three miles. I type my three, I press enter, and let me get this back out of the way. So now it's on the next C out. That's my current line of code. You see the yellow marker, but if I hold my mouse 
over double miles, you see it has a value of three. That's the value that was just inputted. So now we're going to do a C out. Please enter the number of yards. And by the way, the shortcut key for step over is F10. Now it's going to do my C in. So if I come back to my input window, this is where I could type in 105 and press enter. Let me get this out of the way. Now if I hold my mouse over my variable, you'll see it has a 105 in it with a bunch of zeros because it's a double floating point, and so on and so on and so on. So if I tell it to continue, I can do my third input, 235 feet. Tell it to continue and do my fourth input, which is 11 inches. Now I've got my inputs. You can see I've got three 105, 235, and 11. They've been pulled into RAM. So double miles to meters right now just has garbage in it because I created it, but I never set it to zero, but that's okay because I'm going to do a calculation and replace this garbage with a real value. So once again, I want to hit F10. Now we, you can see I've got uh, 4,820 blah, 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 blah meters. And I can keep going, running these lines of code. Now I've run all four of these, and you can see they've got values in them. Now I'm going to total up and see my grand total is the 4,995.95 meters, or five, almost 5 kilometers. Now I'm going to start doing my C outs, and at this point, there's really nothing to show you with this in the debug. So I'm going to come up here and hit my triangle to say continue. And then my program has run to completion, has that same answer value. So once you're done with the debugger, don't forget to come up here and turn off the breakpoint so your program will no longer pause. It'll just run normally. And that is using some C in and C out to do some calculations. Now, I've taken this exact set of code and put it in the online C++ compiler just to show you that it runs the same. So let me switch to my web browser. Here's the exact same code in the online GDB compiler. And I'm going to hit run up here. It's compiling it. Here's my run window down here, so let's put in the same data. 3, 105 yards, 235 feet, 11 inches, and then you can see I get the same output. So it works the same no matter what C++ compiler you're using for C in and C out for console stuff. And this is just showing you some typical things that you might need to do with C in and C out and what is involved with them. Let me go back to my Visual Studio. Just remember, some of these flags have to get, they can be set once and then they're sticky, like fixed floating point, precision of two decimal places, right justification, all that is fine. But set W, you have to do it every time just before the thing you're going to output. Oops, excuse me just before the thing you're going to have to output. You have to repeatedly do it, and then you've got to keep cascading this insert operator. It doesn't matter how many lines you're on. I just broke it onto the next line, but remember it's got to end with a semicolon. So that is a console op, uh, application that does some inputs, does some formatting, or does some calculations, does some formatting, and does some outputs. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this.